Hi golfers, Nick here for Nick Taylor Golf. It's Friday, so welcome to another lesson on golf tips. This week on golf tips, we're gonna take a look at the conventional golf swing compared to the stack and tilt golf swing. Before we take a look at the two swings, and we're gonna take a look at the swings in the setup, we're also gonna take a look at the movements throughout the course of the swing compared to the conventional swing and the stack and tilt golf swing. But before we do that, let's first of all, let's discuss the fundamentals of the conventional swing versus the stack and tilt golf swing. So in the conventional golf swing, you're sort of taught gaps, which is grip, alignment, posture, stance, which kind of makes sense. You sort of set up the same each time. However, in the stack and tilt golf swing, the fundamentals of playing good golf are actually more more dynamic. The fundamentals of the conventional golf swing are kind of static positions. So first of all, let's take grip for example. When you look at the grip of the best golfers in the world, some of them grip it really strong in the left hand, some quite weak. Uh, the same in the right hand as well. Uh, some golfers have the handle in a different place. Some have it higher, some have it lower. So when you talk about grip as a fundamental, all the best players in the world are holding it differently. In the stack and tilt system, we do talk about the grip as there is important things in the grip. I think it's important you hold it in the fingers to help hinge the wrist. There's a couple of key pressure points that are important, but the actual rotation of the hand, I don't, wouldn't say there's a, a standard position for that. I think it's down to the individual and it varies from golfer to golfer. So in the stack and tilt golf swing, the grip is a variable, not a fundamental. In the stack and tilt golf swing, the first key fundamental of playing good golf is contact and controlling where the club hits the ground. Before you worry about the stance, how you align, how you hold it, you need to be able to make sure you contact the ground in the same spot. And that's the first key fundamental of playing golf. So that's more of a dynamic movement in the swing rather than a static position of this is how you have to hold it, when anyway, all the best players will hold it differently. In the conventional swing, the next thing we come across is alignment. So when you look at the best players, some aim left, some aim right, very rarely do the best players in the world aim straight because everyone curves the golf ball. So aiming straight is not great anyway because you're gonna curve the ball away from the target if you're aiming straight. So the best players all align differently. Some aim to the right, some aim to the left. So the second key fundamental in the stack and tilt golf swing is power. And it's building a golf swing that not only makes good contact, but also creates enough power to play the golf course. So, so far we've got conventional grip and alignment, which the best players will do differently. And in the stack and tilt system, we've got contact and power. The next fundamental in the conventional swing is posture and stance. And when you look at the best players, some have quite upright postures, some have uh, tilted over, some uh, have the ball position in a different place in the stance, some set up with their weight differently, so the posture and stance does vary from person to person. Whereas in the stack and tilt system, the third key fundamental is controlling the curve of the ball. It's not necessarily about hitting the ball straight every time because no one really hits the ball dead straight. People hit it pretty straight but not dead straight. In the stack and tilt goal swing, you're trying to control that curve, so not only the direction it curves, but also where the ball starts. So we want that ball to start to the right and draw back in towards the target. That would be like a standard shot for a push draw. So in the conventional goal swing, we've got grip, alignment, posture, stance. In the stack and tilt goal swing, we've got contact, power, and controlling the curve. We need to take a look at the fundamentals. You can see that they're very different, right? The conventional goal swing has always been about the way you set up to the golf ball, whereas in the stack and tilt golf swing, we say that you, you can set up kind of how you want within reason. It's a, it's a variable, not fundamental. It varies from person to person how you set up, but the keys are actually how you swing that golf club, how you make contact with the ball, and how you create power in the golf swing. So let's talk about the differences we see at setup between the conventional golf swing and the stack and tilt golf swing. So as I set up with the stack and tilt golf swing on here, I have my center of my hips and the center of my shoulders more forward, and my shoulders are sort of stacked on my hips. In the conventional golf swing, there's more weight back, and also as these golfer sets up, there's more side tilt to the shoulders. So you can see the differences there between the conventional golf swing where there's weights further back, whereas in the stack and tilt golf swing, the centers are more forward in front of the golf ball. That's gonna help you strike the ground after the ball. By tilting back like this in the conventional golf swing, that's already moving that potential low point behind the golf ball. So as you set up, weight should be forward, not back. That's the difference between the conventional golf swing having the weight on the back leg as opposed to 
moving those two sensors forward like you would do in the stack and tilt golf swing. The next difference I set up is to do with the feet. So when I set up in the stack and tilt golf swing, my feet will be flared, whereas in the conventional golf swing, the feet are straighter. Some will turn the foot out a little bit, but generally the feet are pretty square to the target. So in the stack and tilt golf swing, you flare the feet to help us turn and take stress off the joints. The next difference we'll see from the side view. So in the conventional golf swing, the golfer is told to have a dead straight back and the shoulders pulled back. Whereas in the stack and tilt golf swing, the posture is more rounded and the shoulders are more rounded. This is quite important because it helps keep these key pressure points under the arms through the golf swing. When your shoulders pull back, it's very hard to move your left shoulder downwards and turn them on the correct angle. Another thing that's set up in the conventional golf swing with the straight back, the golfer is told to lift the chin up and that's with the pretense of being able to move the shoulder under the chin, whereas in the stack and tilt golf swing, at the setup, the chin is just slightly tucked in so you can see the ball at the center of your vision compared to in the conventional swing where you would have the chin up. So now we're looking at the golf ball at the center of our eyes, not out the bottom of our eyes like you would do in the conventional swing. So let's talk about the golf swing. So in the stack and tilt golf swing, the first key fundamental is controlling that low point. So let me hit a shot here. So as I set up with the feet turned out, uh, back slightly rounded, two centers center of my hips and shoulders stacked and forward in front of the golf ball to help with that control of that low point. And not a bad shot. So you can see on the screen there, you'll take that. So that's a pretty much a standard shot for the stack and tilt golf swing. A ball that starts out to the right, draws back in towards the target. So that's like a push draw. Now the biggest issue I see in the conventional swing, so with the feet square, the back more straight, the chin up, and the weight set back, already the golfer's already likely to hit behind the golf ball. We're gonna take a look at that swing in a second, but I know certainly doing my conventional swing, it's a little bit harder to control. Now, it wasn't a disastrous shot there, but I felt like I caught that off the bottom of the golf club, even though that ball went out into the green, but the contact didn't feel flush to me, and that's because when I set up, I've got my centers back, even though I did my best attempt there of hitting the golf ball, I still caught it thin, so it didn't feel as flush as it would do in the stack and tilt golf swing. Let's talk about the key differences in the movement. So let's start with the conventional swing. So we've got the feet more square, the center's more back. In the conventional swing, golfers are told to maintain flex in their knees or keep the same flex in their knees. And the problem with that is it restricts how much you can turn. The arms will start to lift. The golfer's been told to turn in the golf swing, they end up sort of turning their shoulders more horizontal to the ground. And the problem with that is it restricts how much you can turn. And then I see this a lot. Golfers will actually start flexing their arms because they can't actually make a, a full turn in the backswing because they're keeping this knee bend, which is restricting their turn. They're taking the hands out. They end up start to flex these arms because they're not turning the shoulders on the correct angle. When you look at the stack and tilt golf swing, the feet are turned out head's looking down at the ball. Key movements as you go back would be to move the left shoulder down or tilt the shoulders. This makes it much easier to bring the hands inwards and around the body. The knee flex is changing. I'm allowing this knee, front knee to flex forward and the back leg to straighten. This is helping me turn my hips, not just more degrees, but also on an angle. It's helping me move my shoulder down on an angle. It's making it much easier to keep my arms straight and connected to my body. In that conventional swing, it's very difficult to turn, my arms start lifting. So you can see the difference there in the backswing between the stack and tilt backswing and sort of the conventional backswing. I know which one the pros look like. So we've arrived to the top of the backswing in the conventional swing. So we're not really tilting, we're not really turning many degrees, especially with our lower body. We're trying to turn our shoulders against our hips, which is really bad for the back anyway. I've moved my centers away from the golf ball because that's what I've been told to do because I'm trying to create power, right? So <laughs> I've moved my centers over here. Now to get back to the ball, I've been told to turn as hard as possible. But at the same time, I've got to try and shallow this club because I've actually taken it up steeper because I've not turned my body enough. And this is where golf has become very difficult to control the low point and the contact because they've got so many variables going on. They've lifted, 
They've not turned enough, they've flexed their arms. Now they're trying to turn on the downswing and shallow the club at the same time. It's so hard to time, all right? In the downswing of the second tilt goal swing, we've already stacked our centers more forward. So from here, all we need to do is move forward and turn with our lower body, and our centers are already in front of the golf ball. We don't have to have this big shift to get back to try and make contact with the ball because we've already set our centers forward at address and kept them there in the backswing. And golfers are told in the conventional swing to really turn on the downswing, but at the same time shallow the club. This is really hard movement to do. It causes a whole host of problems, right? If you're able to open up your feet, change your knee flex, move your shoulder down, move the hands inwards, you already set yourself in position here to deliver that club into the golf ball as opposed to in that conventional way of sort of swinging into the backswing. And I see this a lot. This is one of the biggest issues in the backswing. Um, golfers swaying too much, flexing their arms, not turning enough because this is how they've been told to swing the golf club. So in the conventional swing, we're told to turn shallow and then try and release the hands and try and do all these things and time the golf ball. It's, it's really hard to do. So I'm keeping my knee flexed, moved off the golf ball. I'm trying to shallow the club trying to roll the hands and turn. It's really, it's really hard to do that. You've got time all these different movements. Whereas in the stack and tilt goal swing, we've already turned better by moving the body in a better way. We've opened up our feet, that opens up our knees and our ankles to rotate, take stress off the body. We're moving the hands inwards. We don't have to start trying to shallow this club on the way back down. Our centers are already in front of the golf ball. It's a much easier way of striking the ball. You can see the difference in the sound of those two swings. Because I've got my centers in front, I'm able to hit forward on the ball here as I come back down. So let's just go into a little bit more detail in the body movements as we start down. In the second tilt goal swing, from the top of the back swing, what you'll start to notice is from the side view here, knee flex will start to regain. And by the time I get to roughly left arm parallel, my lower body's pretty much where it was at address. And then as I start to get into Shaft parallel here, club head just inside the hands. The shoulders are roughly square to the target. Hips are starting to open up a little bit. But also from the front view, I've also started to move forward and I'm starting to turn into more of a right tilt in my spine here as I go through. So that hips pushing forward is tilting my shoulders now to the right. Backswing, we're tilting the shoulders to the left. Downswing and impact, we're tilting those shoulders to the right. So into the follow through here, I'm gonna continue to push my hips forward push my weight forward. And then as I go through, I'm trying to keep my hands and club on the grid. So moving it round to the left and keeping the face pretty square to the arc of the swing. And then just re-hinging into the finish. In the conventional swing, we're all out of whack. And then we're trying to release the hands to try and draw the ball, but we're trying to do that from behind the golf ball, which is almost impossible. So in the stack and tilt golf swing, we've already set our centers forward. We're just gonna swing on the grid, push our hips forward, re-hinge the club on the way through. And that felt really flush. It feels so much easier to swing like that, keeping the centers forward, swinging the hands in, moving the shoulder down, swinging around on the grid, moving the hips forward, not rolling the face, keeping the face square to the arc, and just re-hinging on the finish. Very simple movements, in my opinion, of uh, swinging the golf club. So key fundamentals, stack and tilt. First one, contact. Making sure that club hits in front of the golf ball. Okay, by having your centers forward, keeping them there, and then pushing the hips through, makes it much easier to hit the same point on the ground. If I'm shifting away from the golf ball, lifting my arms, trying to shallow the club, trying to roll the hands, trying to turn, it's really hard to time where this club hits the ground. I see this so often, golfers, that they can't hit the same point on the ground because they've been told to swing like this for so long. It becomes so much of a habit as they try and swing. And in the end, some players can make decent contact sometimes, but it's not that consistency like you see in the best players in the world. So just by adopting that setup position is gonna help. And then in the movements, we move the shoulder down, move the hands inwards, tilt the shoulders, change the knee flex, much easier to swing around the body. We're keeping the arms on the body here, We're not flaying them around over here somewhere, keeping them on the body and on the grid as we swing. Another conventional swing. So square, square feet, handle back, centers back, shift, keep the knee flex, turn, roll the hands, thin again. No surprise, hit the ball thin. All right, it's so hard to get that low point in front of the golf ball. 
without having a massive shift forward, which you, you could do, but it's really hard to time. I find it much easier to turn the feet, keep those centers forward, get my shoulders slightly rounded, move my shoulder down, change my knee flex, bring my hands inwards in the backswing and then inwards on the way through. Completely different sound and strike. You, if you can get that contact where you're hitting the ball at the center and the low point in front of the ball, you're gonna play better golf. So I think that's pretty simple really. Adopt the stack and tilt fundamentals, the setup, the swing, you're gonna control the low point, you're gonna hit the ball further and more consistently. Still sticking with that conventional swing, you're gonna struggle. So golfers, if you've got any comments on that, post them in the box below. If you don't already, please follow me on my other social media platforms and I'll see you again next week for another video on golf tips.